How do you do, y'all? This is John, and today we are talking about Inside Out 2, a new movie on theaters right now. And in Inside Out 2, it deals with the emotions of this girl named Riley, who come into conflict when a new set of emotions arrive, because Riley has hit a certain stage in her life, and actually, you know, it, it's the stage where you develop these emotions, like anxiety, envy you know, embarrassment. Yeah, those emotions. However, due to certain circumstances, joy and the other four emotions from the first movie end up elsewhere and have to find a way to get back to their little emotional control deck. Okay, so getting into it first and foremost, what I liked about the movie, this may just be a fluke, but Pixar's magic, the magic of their movies that I grew up with, of movies like Monsters, Inc., Up, Toy Story, A Bug's Life, those movies, it felt like it was back in this film. It's been three, four years since we've seen a Pixar movie that actually felt like a Pixar movie, and honestly, you know, that was nice to feel. Because it's pretty obvious that Disney's mandates, a lot of them ridiculous, some of which I some of which I technically don't mind, it's just how they are approaching it that I do mind. But others that are just completely ridiculous. We have seen that seep into Pixar, unfortunately. But now with this one, it, it felt like they were back on track. Pixar was back on track. And, you know, it just felt, it was just a beautiful feeling to have. And in terms of, like, the narrative, there's one element of it that I will gripe about. However, I will save that for later in this video. But it's what they do with the narrative that that is engaging because as you know riley the human character is going through this period of her life so is the main character the motion joy going through very similar things she has joy she has happiness she is you know all the excitement within all of us and honestly you know she ends up in conflict in this film, not only with Anxiety, who is sort of the antagonist, but not really, but she is also in conflict with herself because she is starting to learn, you know, Riley needs more than just her and the other four emotions, anger, disgust, fear, and sadness. And also, let's talk about Anxiety, who's sort of an antagonist, but not really. What I mean by that is, Anxiety is doing what Anxiety thinks is the right thing. That's right. She thinks she is in the right, even though technically she's going overboard. Yes, certain elements of what's going on justifies the emotion of Anxiety but not to the level that anxiety is going. That's why I say she's sort of the antagonist, but not really, because Riley needs her, just not as much of her as she thinks she needs. And all of the typical Pixar stuff that you know and love from the 90s and 2000s, that is in this movie. And it is a beautiful thing to feel. The timing for the heart-to-heart. -heart, the timing for the laughs. The timing for just somewhat dark stuff to go on. That's in this movie. And like I said, that was just a beautiful thing to feel. It's been four years since I felt that watching a Pixar movie, and it was nice. And in terms of the animation, I've always praised Pixar, even in the 
this low point that they've been in for the past couple of years for their animation. Because it is, their animation is just beautiful. I love it. And this movie's no exception. If you loved the animation in Soul or Coco, you're going to love the animation in this movie. Because it is beautiful. It's incredibly well animated. You know, it's, it's just amazing to look at. Now, in terms of problems, okay, this one's kind of a minor gripe. But I do think it's worth talking about. There's this one character they introduced into this movie that I think they were trying to do like this sort of Bean Bond scenario where, you know, Bean Bond in the original Inside Out, yeah, he was annoying, but he was the lovable kind of annoying. You know, he wasn't the kind of annoying that you're completely irritated with and, you know, you actually enjoyed his presence somewhat. With this one, though, that character is just simply annoying and irritating. Thankfully, he's only in a couple scenes, but it, it was kind of obvious they were trying to recreate Bing Bong a little bit. I didn't like it. The big problem I had with the movie, though, is the narrative is kind of just the first movie all, all, all over again. Even though Joy and the other four emotions are going through a different sort of conflict, sort of emotional crisis than in the first movie. If you think about it, it's kind of the first movie all over again. Okay, not kind of, but very much so. And, you know, I'm just used to Pixar sequels having more or less a different narrative than the previous movie. Like, Toy Story 2 and Toy Story 3 had a completely different narrative from the previous movies. But all in all, even though it might, have, might just be a fluke, Inside Out 2 is incredibly good. I really like it. If you're going to take your family to see any Disney movie this year that's not like a re-release of their 30s, 40s, 50s stuff, or even 80s and 90s, go watch this movie. There's nothing that is, like, offensive to the family unit in it. No forced messaging or whatever that I noticed anyway. It's just a incredible movie, and it felt like Pixar, from my youth, came back from my childhood. I am going to give Inside Out 2 a 9. Well, that's all of the time I have for today. Please hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. Please also subscribe if you're new to the channel. And as always, please remember the Burdetsky will return.